is the Simpit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to hang out and talk about sim racing and talk about all the great things going on across the world of sim racing, all sorts of things from virtually every sim racing camp. Everybody has some news today, everything cool going on, and it's all at the beginning of real life racing season. This is that time of year. I, I say it every year. I feel like I repeat myself sometimes, but this is that time of year we start getting that sim racing bug. Why? Because there's starting to be that chatter, whether it's your favorite forum or your favorite uh, uh, website or your favorite TV uh, uh, sports channel racing is coming back we already had the daytona 24 that sort of officially kicks things off and now we're getting to the point where each and every week a new series is going to start up their season and after last season being very very odd let's just call it hopefully things will return to being a little bit normal more normal this season maybe not at kickoff but by the end of the season Oh gosh, I hope we're back to just watching races in person and hanging out and getting to smell the tires and the fuel and all that good stuff once again. So again, I'm getting that bug. I'm seeing it on TV. I'm hearing it from my friends. I'm seeing the stories all over the internet and it gets me pumped up for racing. So that's a great way to kick off today's show and get things going in the right direction. And I'm looking already forward to something that I have to bow out of. So tomorrow... Tomorrow is the iRacing Sebring 12 hour. Uh, this is one of my favorite endurance races on the calendar. Uh, I was scheduled to run with the Sim Pit team, and the guys have been out working hard getting ready for this race. And I cannot believe I have to say what I'm about to say. I have to pull out of the race due to an injury. What? How do you injure yourself in sim racing? Well, in fact, it wasn't sim racing that I injured myself. I twisted my ankle. Relatively simple. Twisted the ankle. I was working on some things, kind of tripped over something I had here in the studio and twisted my ankle and the ankle's all better. But what happened is my arch, my foot, my heel, my foot, everything inside of my foot went wrong and just still doesn't feel right. And I can walk on it, but I just can't put weight on it very long and I can't sit in a sim rig driving for hours, so I cannot race, but I'm going to be tuning in tomorrow on the Sim Pit channels in order to cheer on and root for and watch the Sim Pit teams as they do take on iRacing Sebring 12 Hour. If you and your friends, you and your team are running tomorrow, I wish you all the best of luck. Endurance racing is a very special type of sim racing, and it brings out a, a team camaraderie that you don't always find in sim racing. So it is one of those special events, and I wish anyone and everyone who's taking part in the event the best of luck in it. And I, I have, hope you have a good server, I hope you have a good race group, and I hope everything goes well. Also coming from iRacing was the William Byron dominating the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series opener on Dirt Bristol. So uh, Dirt Bristol is another one of the stories for the week, I think on my next tab, I have iRacing once again. And Bristol Dirt, our guys gave it a shot. I know we had a fun run there last week, and some guys really did it. What I've seen watching races at Bristol, and this is true all the way to the pro level, by the way, some guys get it. That Some guys get that you can't just go full throttle coming off the corner. Uh, some guys get that you might not ever get to full throttle at Bristol Dirt. And other guys just don't get it. They they just don't accept or, or, or tone down their driving efforts to realize that you're on dirt. You know, there's a big reason dirt racing is not part of the normal schedule of NASCAR. It's a different discipline. Now, I understand a lot of the roots of a lot of the drivers in NASCAR come from the dirt world. But once you've gotten to the point where you're running pro for so long, dirt is a foreign entity for most of those guys. So whether you're talking sim racing or real life racing, uh, it's it's a different discipline, different challenge. So the Pro Invitational is dominated by William Byron, um, which is not a big surprise if you think about it. If you really think about it, William Byron has quite a bit of history in sim racing. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, we're here for the, here's some shots from the Pro Invitational, um, but one of the things I did want to talk about today were, was Bristol, and have you driven it? What are your thoughts on Bristol? I did a few laps just to get a taste, just to get some dirt in my face, and it was, uh, pretty fun. Here's some shots from the, the Pro Race. Oh man, they're wrecking, flipping down the back stretch. So flipping down the back stretch. Put it out. Well, they're not going to put it out because there's no cautions in the heat races. <laughs> Barney has the green flag in hand, and here we go. Oh, man. Joey Logano already getting excited. You're three wide, Joey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
it's going. It's driving a lot different than, than what a second ago was. I, I love Boyer's going to be a spotter. Oh man, they're wrecking, flipping down the back straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we already saw it. Okay, so yeah, that is what's been going on. Whether you're the pro, whether you're one of us, a lot of people have been playing with the dirt at Bristol. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have to admit, this is really one of those special things. Uh, we get to do things in sim racing that that not everybody gets to do. And I know Bristol was done in real life for the guys to to race in real life, but it's awesome that iRacing was able to get it and get it in game for us as well. So moving on to R Factor, you know, R Factor, we're keeping our eye on R Factor to see what goes on with the new acquisition. Uh, as of now, their pace is, is if anything, increased. Uh, more information, more news, more rollouts. Uh, really excited with what's going on at R Factor too. Very optimistic for the future, despite some of my dislikes of what's going on, I am very optimistic. So anyway, the competition system rollout continues. We're into week 12. Can you believe 12 weeks already since their competition system was released? They've continued to make updates regularly, beyond regularly on it. In addition to that, having Q&A, uh, answering questions of the community in regards to what's going on, what kind of changes are being made, what kind of other things they're going to implement into the competition system. So great read there. And again, as I mentioned on every show, but I will mention it now, if you want to read this Q&A, you want to read any of the stories that I've talked about, I have a link to everything that we talked about on the show here today in the description here at YouTube. Just scroll down, you'll find the link, and you can read the full Q&A. Or you can read about the new AI and track update for Circuit de Azur. Uh, that went on as well a couple of days ago. That's another update, and there's the full update notes for that. And as if that wasn't enough, on the 23rd, they released Stock Car 2018X, Stock Car Racing. Heard some really good things. I have not driven it yet. I've had a really weird week here uh, in the studio, but not in the studio, and I haven't had a chance to get it. I've heard from friends of mine who say it's it's pretty cool. This this give it some time. This could be a game changer uh, for R Factor. Be being thought of as as a true. Uh, ironically, look at all the road course shots they're showing on their NASCAR rollout. That's a little interesting and something to keep your eye or mind on. Anyway, congratulations to R-Factor 2 on really good pace and getting some new stuff off. Uh, speaking of new stuff, Project Cars Go! Speeds onto Android as a one-tap racer. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> you can read the link. <laughs> dirt! So, Dirt Showdown has shown up. Four legendary Dirt Showdown cars are coming to Dirt 5 in the Uproar content pack on March 30th. So, we're a little less than a week away along with so much more. So they're going to have the Duke Coupe. The Duke Coupe. The Zenden Cup. The Jackson Eulogy. That's like straight out of Wreckfest there. And then finally, the Jackson Adventurer. So four new cars coming to Dirt 5 in this new content update. Uh, here's a little video getting the scoop on what's going on. After Dark Playgrounds, the new Dirt 5 content, the Uproar content pack, launches March 30th with legendary Dirt Showdown cars, new career events, and extra achievements and more. After Dark Playground, private lobbies, and iconic liveries. Oh! Just in time to get demonetized. There we go. All right, what else? Formula One. Uh, they had a small fix that came out. Uh, again, t Formula One, if you look through their page... Most of what they're talking about is anticipation of real-life Formula One. It wasn't so much the game as much as exactly, hey, if it sells, if it wins on Sunday, it sells on Monday. You could say the same thing. If it airs on Sunday, we want to race it on Monday or Friday or whatever. But anyway, uh, there was a small patch that was done, and there was a fix to the patch as well that rolled out for F1. Uh, looks like they're doing some charitable gaming. Uh, this uh, Raise Your Game host virtual gameathon for hospice care. So they're doing a, a charity drive for Formula One as well for Birmingham St. Mary's Hospice. Uh, so if you want to support hospice support, you can raise your game in F1 and host series and races and whatnot. So good stuff there. Simbin. Have not heard from Simbin in a day, a year. Five years, a decade, I don't know. It's been forever. Last post was January 10th. 
and that was about a football, a soccer team. Uh, before that, it was January 7th, offering job, looking, hiring. Didn't hear anything for months until today. And this is the post, actually it was on the 24th, two days ago. We're restructuring the GTR3 project. They're closing their Discord channel and pausing all social media, which I would argue, I don't know what goes on in their Discord channel, but has been quite paused for quite some time. The talent in Simbin Studios UK will now be backed up by additional resources and a fresh plan over the coming months. Lesson learned. No more empty promises. Okay. So we're going to have to keep our eye on Simbin once again for the future because they are making moves. Uh, Thrustmaster talking about their affiliation with the Russian Forza Motorsport Championship. Uh, the 15 million views they got in their history so far. Uh, 10,000 gamers participated in it. And uh, the new season will be 10 qualifying stages from March through December of 2021. Winners at various stages will get prizes. Um, 1,000 rubles is the the prize fund for the entire tournament so if you're a russian forts ahead time to get out there and win some rubles thrustmaster also uh here i always say you know when you get drafted to a formula one esport team y you get that the, the political side of it as well i don't know if it's political but you know uh your which team works with which companies has what affiliations what sponsorships that could affect whether you're excited or not anyway thrustmaster we're delighted to, and honored to continue our collaboration with ferrari esport as official technical partner competition will be longer and undoubtedly very competitive stay tuned more information so uh anyway uh thrustmaster and ferrari still working hand in hand in sim racing Eurojack, there is an update to 1.40. 1.40 is known as the open beta release. This is a very, very big deal that came out a few months ago for Eurotruck, ATS, ETS. And uh, the open beta w was like revolutionary. It was huge. It, it was a game changing event. Anyway, they have done an update specific to that update. So this might not affect everybody uh depending on how you and what you're doing in your euro truck simulator but another big update and they just keep going those guys are on fire they are just the best uh autosport with an article i just mentioned why ferrari has caught the sim racing bug um talking about why ferrari you know they're a little late to the party if you think about it all the other formula one teams were heavily involved for a full year before Ferrari jumped in. Now they are involved, and they are it, but uh, when on Sunday, sell on Monday, it's been one of the most famous mantras behind the involvement of manufacturers in motorsport. Uh, but the world has changed a great deal over the past few... It's about merchandising. That's the bottom line. If you, I'm not going to go too far into it. You can read this article. It's one of those ones for you, not for me. Uh, but it comes down to merchandising. You know, when you win on Sunday, it's not about selling a car on monday anymore it's about how many millions of dollars in t-shirts and hats and souvenirs did you sell as a result of that win your fanship of the brand marquee and merchandising that's what it's really all about uh jay ski uh many of you nascar fans will know jay ski silly season i remember this way back when jay ski i might have been 20 years ago i would tune into jay ski to find out what drivers were changing teams in the off season this is long before we had the internet and cable television to what we are or have today um but this is one of the places you'd find anyway they are talking about motorsport games acquiring the remainder of 704 games is the group behind nascar heat so uh motorsport had already owned a majority of the the game and i uh, acquire 7.6 percent of the outstanding shares i don't know where or how motorsport games is getting all this money it's some big venture capital behind it i'm assuming uh but they are just buying up every piece of real estate in, in sim racing they possibly can uh i'm still a little skeptical uh i'm gonna stay optimistic skeptical can you be both at the same time can the boat can that can a glass be both half empty and half full at the same time or are they opposite things i don't know so when you are dragged through the mud for bad events and put your name down there for things that 
people frowned upon. What do you do to rehabilitate your name in sim racing? Well, Kyle Larson is to highlight charitable causes in his return to iRacing. So after the big event, as Kyle Larson is now, I guess that lifetime ban has expired. Uh, was it, <laughs> I don't know if it was a lifetime. Uh, it's not a lifetime. It's the the... Oh, what's the word they keep using? And I just hate them for using it. Um, they give these drivers... It's not a lifetime ban. Oh, I hope someone in chat types it in before my brain melts here. Um, per, it's not permanent. It's... Uh, anyway, Kyle Larson is back. And with him comes some charitable organizations on his iRacing ride for the Pro Invitational, I'm assuming. Uh, anyway, Codemasters and NetEase will launch the first open beta for race for Racing Master tonight. So two day, days ago, uh, Racing Master, which I'm not... That's all I have to say about that. Can I leave it there? Can I just... Yeah. I mean, when I talk about things that I am optimistic for, uh, it has nothing to do with this. And... and, and Believe me, when Codemasters makes a game that has nothing to do with anything that we're going to want to partake in, I don't think of that as, as going the wrong direction, by the way. I feel like companies are allowed to have multiple interests, multiple end users that they're targeting, and obviously this is not being targeted for me and probably not for you as well. But if you're looking for like an Android racer, you know, you want to play on the go, maybe your kids are looking, you're trying to get your kids into it. I always say that about the simple versions, you know, they, you know, you have a kid and they see you racing all the time and maybe they can't hop in your rig and run, but maybe the bug has already, maybe the seed has been planted in their head and they're thinking about and wanting to. So, so maybe that's the way to get them into it. Uh, we mentioned a few times, there's a mysterious Gran Turismo sport update. Apparently yesterday was the day that it was going to happen. I don't know. I have not confirmed that it did or didn't. Again, for a month now, we've been talking about it in a mysterious way. I had heard things about an electric car pack. I'm not sure was that in, in this update. Uh, I do not have it currently loaded on anything, so I wouldn't even be able to. But uh, apparently yesterday there was a update. And then, as you may have heard, Gran Turismo 7 will no longer receive the go-ahead this year as Sony has recently confirmed that the launch has been pushed back to 2022 due to problems caused by the global health issue. So uh, this is sort of a hold you over at, uh, until, perhaps? Anyway, go out there, check it out if you're Gran Turismo. Uh, this is back to iRacing, really, but it's the IMSA iRacing Pro Series. It's a three-race series in the IMSA Series. So this is not Porsches only. This is all the GT3 cars. Thursday, April 8th at Sebring, which is where everybody's racing. Tomorrow on the 12-hour. Don't forget 12-hour. And then Thursday, April 22nd at, at Laguna Seca, followed by Thursday, May 6th at Road Atlanta. Three-race series, championship-level racing, pro-level racing in iRacing kicks off this month. Uh, you know, we mentioned Bristol, and... These this is not a normal thing for NASCAR. So what are the crew chiefs? How are the the crew chiefs are scrambling to figure out what to do and how to set up the car for the drivers? Uh, what you know, it's a completely different discipline, including car setup. Anyway, apparently the crew chiefs have been using iRacing to navigate the unknowns of Bristol dirt, and there's a write up right here from Hendrick Motorsports of all places, telling you exactly what they did in that. You can check that out. Uh, new game, new game. This is in pre-release, in early access, we should call it. The bus. Uh, the bus is the next. I know we have a handful of bus drivers, city bus drivers in our ranks, guys who hang out with the pit crew, uh, who who drive a bus for a living. So if you drive a bus for a living, do you want to go home at night and drive more bus? Or is this for those who don't do it and always dreamed of? But anyway, the bus is the next generation of city bus driving simulation set in the capital of Germany, Berlin. On a realistic scale of one to one, transport passengers on different lines across the city with various buses, manage your fleet, and team up with other drivers online. Anyway, positive reviews so far, 415 of them, and it is in early access at $25. I don't know. Is that something we need to try? You tell me. Is that something we need to try? Uh, Forza Horizon 5. Uh, this is not in my language. I thought I had it in my language. Um, 
This is going to tell us that Forza Horizon 5 was going to had some surprise, some twists and turns. I had it on my other browser before the show and didn't realize that we did not get a translate. And I'm afraid to click any button. So forgive me on this story. But this is talking about Forza Horizon 5 and some of the new things that are going to be in Forza Horizon 5. And it's something that you can start getting excited about as well. Um, Timmy Hill might drop off full-time NASCAR schedule after iRacing exclusion. So I feel bad for Timmy Hill. And I gotta, I'll gotta i be honest. I feel bad and I can relate with. There have been some invitational events in sim racing that I felt that I should have been invited to and wasn't. And I often think, who are these people who are in charge of like creating the list? And how do they leave off influential names how do they leave off important names uh the only full-time driver without an invitation has caused real world sponsorship issues in 2020 timmy hill ran full-time in the nascar cup series so far in 2021 he's run all the races as well however as entry list was released for the nascar pro invitational event hill's name was excluded the event is an invitational only race he voiced his uh now i thought i heard he was actually in the race so did I didn't get to write, watch the race at Bristol. I thought one of my friends told me Timmy Hill was running on TV. I'm a little confused now. Perhaps he was given a late entry uh, invite. But I mean, anyway, it, it, it just it, it just kind of struck me funny that somebody who is exceptionally good uh, and dedicated didn't get an invite to the thing. But these things happen. It's happened to me. All right, let's look at something to make us laugh. Let's look at a few rigs to make us smile. And then let's talk about some Simpit racing coming into the future so we can all be competitive. But uh, this also didn't translate. Dang it. Uh, this was a, a vote for, do we have a, an award for, do we have a contest for the world's ugliest car? Because Autoblog is speculating that this, in fact, is the ugliest car ever made. Uh, <laughs> it is not a looker. <laughs> not really sim racing related oh my gosh that looks like out of dr seuss that looks like a who car <coughs> oh my god look at these doors you guys look at this thing the safaric the safari car oh i wish i had to translate hysterical this looks Oh my god, yes, gun rack. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you enjoyed that or not, but I, it made me smile. I think Tofi sent that in. Thank you, Tofi. All right, let's look at a few rigs, talk some sim racing, and then get on with the weekend. Seems legit, right? This was posted by Nep Nep 919 And I just like the mess of sim racing. Pot. I can't even tell what's going on, to be honest with you. He's got a custom rig. You can see he's building his own custom rig. He's got a simu cube. Is that or just a generic DD? Bunch of wheel rims with no buttons on them. He's got an old Thrustmaster wheel sitting there. It's sim pile. <laughs> this guy showing off his 3D printing talents. Finally finishes G29 and G920 molded, modded wheel models with new 3D printed printer. I like those ergo grips. Those look quite comfortable, I will say. Anyway, good job there, converting two wheels using 3D printing. Um, growing up, he never thought he'd have a rig like this. And it was the quote. It wasn't the rig. I love the rig. It's a beautiful rig. But it, how many of you? I was just yesterday talking to somebody on Facebook about their rig, and they showed me their progression from desktop to mediocre rig to full pro rig. And I just thought, man, how many of us have been down that exact path but here you are growing up like i never thought i'd have a rig like this and uh, i think many of us have been there done that and then finally we got this one sometimes simplicity just does it so well from a wheel stand and a lovely couch to a full-on sim lab p1x and dnd reclinable seat yeah it's a cool seat he's got on this thing Anyway, uh, nice looking rig, nice looking blacked out P1. You can see the butt kicker on the, yeah, I guess he had a desk before because this is the clamp on for his desk chair, perhaps. Anyway, nice looking rig by that guy's, that guy raw said, that guy raw said. Anyway, that takes me to Simpit Racing. Obviously, we have the 24-hour race tomorrow that is taking up the weekend for most of the guys. And then starting next week, we do have the Simpit Racing Leagues uh, getting underway. 
uh, starting with the Simpit Oval League. This is a development truck series. Is, are we in trucks? I don't think we're in the trucks. I think that's mistitled. Anyway, uh, I thought we were in the ARCA car. I hope I didn't screw that up in my head. Anyway, uh, we need a new graphic here. A few little errors, but I do know this. We are starting at Bristol, and this is going to be next Thursday, uh, April 1st, and we have an eight race schedule. If you want to join, you want to race with us. Whether it's the endurance racing, obviously you can't join the team tomorrow. For tomorrow, if it's endurance racing in the future, if it's our oval series, our dirt oval series with Billy Strange, if it's our our our, road, our paved oval, or whether it's the road racing, if you want to race with the Simpit gang, just type in exclamation mark Discord, and it'll give you a link to our Discord channel. That's where you'll find all the information for all of the Simpit racing going on. We have sections and threads for all of that stuff. But anyway, kicking off next week is the Simpit Oval League, and then of course next week also on Sundays. Simpit GT3 League. This is a closed league. If you are not registered for this league before the first race on the 4th, there will be no late entries. These are our trophy series. We give full trophies to our winners, and it should be an exciting season. I'm very excited about doing some help with some of the oval guys, bringing some of the guys uh, newer to oval up to speed, and also looking to be more competitive in this league's GT3 season than I was last season. So lots of work to do on my part to, to back that up. But, uh, and I'm going to have to heal up that foot first to even get on to the pursuit. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the pit stop and hearing about what's going on in sim racing. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to find out more news channels, things like this, or we have reviews thing and racing, things like that. Check out Sim Pit Live on YouTube if you want to see my personal racing as well. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.